Ridge Haven campers, families and friends, we're glad you're here and we do hope, campers, families, that you are inviting your friends to let's learn together of Christ. Even some boys and girls or young people who've not even been to Ridge Haven, invite them to come and learn of Christ as we study Pilgrim's Progress together. Always invite others to watch and let's learn together, okay? I'm glad we have these times. In our story, Pilgrim and his friend Hopeful have left the city of destruction. They've lost the burden of their sins as they went to the cross and began trusting in Christ as they're turning from going their own way to Christ. It's all of grace. It's not by our efforts. It's not by our performance. It's not by being good enough. It's Christ's life, his death, his resurrection, that we can lose our burdens of sin. And they have gone to the beautiful castle. They have received the full armor of God, and now they're on their way. But, Going to the celestial city is not always easy nor always fun. It can be very difficult in our lives, disappointments. And they became disappointed and they got off the road and tried Easy Street. And there on Easy Street, they are clocked by the giant, the giant of despair, the giant of discouragement. And the giant took Pilgrim and Hopeful to his castle and threw them into his dungeon. And the giant has told them they will never get out of the dungeon of discouragement and depression, that they will die there. Oh, they, Pilgrim would open up the Bible to learn, to get encouragement, to give hope in their times. They would read together through that little bit of sunlight. They came through holes in the wall or through the window. I'm sorry, hopeful. I'm sorry that I told you to let's take easy street. I wish we had not. But they were encouraged that they would read verses such as from the Bible. Remember, the sword of the Spirit promises, I will never leave you nor forsake you, says Jesus Christ to his own. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us, even when you go through hard times. Or Psalm 23, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Listen, Jesus never promises to take us out of trouble, but he does promise to go with us through our trouble. Remember that, campers. Remember that, family. Remember that. Jesus never promises to keep us from trouble, but he promises to always go with us through the trouble, through the hard times. It is God's word that brings encouragement. Hopeful, I cannot believe I've been so foolish. I forgot we have a special key that we are to use in time like this. It's called the promises of God from the scriptures. Hopeful, we've got a key. Do you think it will work? And so Pilgrim went up to that locked gate door to the dungeon. And as he put in the key, and it worked. Oh, but will it work in the next gate? So then they went to the next gate and he put in the key and oh, it worked. One more gate that goes to the outside. 
And as Pilgrim put the key in that last door to go outside and opens the door, the door begins to squeak so loud that it wakes up the giant of despair. Whoa, what are you doing trying to escape from my dungeon? You cannot get away. Oh. Pilgrim uses the promises of God to show the giant that he has been defeated. A scripture like Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. Look at this verse. Believe it, believe it. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. That's a wonderful, wonderful promise from God. Listen, he is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came against Satan, the devil, the giant, the Apollyon, and disarmed him. Means he defeated him. Christ defeated Satan at the cross and disarmed him. It means took his power away from him. That's what they do in the military. When one army defeats another, they defeat them and then they disarm them, take away their weapons. Or when a police officer comes against a criminal and arrests them, they disarm them, they take away their weapons. And that's what Jesus did at the cross and the resurrection. He disarmed the devil, all authorities, humiliating them. At the Christ, at the cross. Guys, Jesus Christ has won. He's the champion. He has won against Satan. And so they are so happy. <laughs> they run back as fast as they can. They jump over the fence and they get back on the road that goes to the celestial city. <sighs> they are so relieved and happy. And who are you? Ask a stranger. Oh, 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 I'm ignorant. But you can call me Mr. Ignorant. And where are you going, Mr. Ignorant? Oh, I'm going to the Celestial City. But I see you don't have armor. Didn't you go to the beautiful castle and get armor? No, I don't need armor. Oh, well, Mr. Ignorant, did you go to the cross and lose your burden of sin? No, I don't. I never had a burden. See, I'm good. I'm a good person. In fact, I go to church and I pray and I study the Bible and I give money to the poor people. I'm not one of those bad sinners like the two of you. No, I don't have a burden. And I didn't have to go to the cross. I'm fine. Now listen, I'm going to the celestial city, says Mr. Ingram. If y'all are in a hurry, y'all go on. I'm just taking my time. I'm going to enjoy this. Remember, I am fine. Well, Mr. Ingram, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that all of us have sinned. There is none of us right, righteous. No, not one. Listen, I'm fine. Y'all just go on. I'm fine. Just leave me alone. And so they continued, but they felt so sorry because they knew he really was ignorant. He was not believing the truth of Scripture. He was trying to be good enough. It's good to read the Bible. It's good to go to church. It's good to pray. It's good to give your money to those who are poor. But, family, that's not what makes us a Christian. It's us turning only to Christ to trust in his life, his death, his resurrection to take away our sin and make us accepted. See, Mr. Ignorant was trusting in himself. 
We do not. We cannot trust in ourselves. Do not trust in being good enough. You can never be good enough. Only Christ is good enough. Pilgrim and his friend Hopeful would stop. And they enjoyed reading together and studying and praying. For the Bible says two are better than one. For we have a better return for our efforts. Live as a Christian, enjoying others, friends, going to church, learning of Christ. Oh. Hopeful. There it is. We're getting close. You see it way over there. That's the celestial city. We must wait. We must wait for them to call our name. We must wait for them to call our name. While the Bible says there is a book, the book of the Lamb that has written in it every true Christian who will enter into the celestial city. So we got to wait. So as they waited, they enjoyed talking to each other. Occasionally, someone would call out, Bob, Sue, Sam, Ralph, it's your turn. And oh, what a joy it was when different ones were being called to now enter into the celestial city. And so as they are waiting, unexpectedly, there comes who? Who is that? That's Mr. Ignorant. And he doesn't stop for them to call his name. He just keeps on walking. What, aren't you going to stop? Asked Pilgrim and Hopeful. No. Remember, I don't have to wait. They will welcome me. They're glad to see me because I'm so good. Surely they'll welcome me into the celestial city because of all the good I do. I'm fine. Remember, I'm fine. I'm good. I try hard and I'm sincere. It wasn't very long. Some men were carrying Mr. Ignorant from heading to the celestial city and bringing him back and taking him to a cliff where they dropped him into that place of suffering, that place of torment, the Bible calls hell because Mr. Ignorant was trusting in himself to be good enough. He refused to believe that it is by grace we are saved through faith and that not of ourselves. It is not by being good enough. It's only the gift, the gift of our Lord. Remember what 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 says. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. We can look forward to the grace of Christ, faith to believe on Christ, to go into the celestial city. It is far better than we could ever, ever imagine going into the celestial city to worship Jesus Christ, to honor Christ, to love Christ, to obey Christ. And now, pilgrim, hopeful, they're calling for you. <laughs> they're calling your name. Ooh, they are so happy, but Look, what is that? It's a river. It's a river that they must cross as they go into the celestial city. Pilgrim says, is it deep? Well, for some it's deep, but it's not too deep. To others it is shallow, but you can stand. You can make it. Now keep your eye 
Keep your eye on the promises of God as you proceed into the celestial city. And so they do. And it was quickly. They arrived in the celestial city. And there, it's all because of Christ. It's all because of the cross. What is it like, family? Rich Haven campers, family, you friends. What's it like in the celestial city? There's a lot we do not know. But we have enough in the Bible to tell us what it's like to live in the family, to give honor and praise and worship to Christ. Here in Revelation, the book of Revelation, Revelation is the last book in the whole Bible. Chapter 4, verse 8 tells us of this, gives us a picture of something that it's like. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes and around and within. And day and night, they never cease to say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Amen. Whew. What's it like in the celestial city? What's it like in heaven? For eternity, forever and ever, we have the privilege and responsibility to give applause to Jesus Christ, to thank Christ, to honor Christ, to worship Christ, and to see his holiness. He is holy, holy, holy. He is the perfect one. He is the Lord. Jesus Christ is the God, the almighty, powerful, strong one. There's no one stronger than Christ. He was, he is, and he is forever, Jesus Christ. We have another wonderful, wonderful description of what it's like in heaven. When in Revelation chapter 4, and whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who is seated on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. And they cast their crowns before the throne saying, worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they existed and were created Whew. family family jesus christ is worthy of your love he's worthy of your obedience he's worthy of your life whatever you consider as valuable and important like these elders, he is worthy for us to take everything that we think as a, think that is important and bow before Christ. Please, now at your age, and as long as you live, will you give thanksgiving, obedience, honor to Jesus Christ? For he is our creator. We exist. We live by him. Let's pray. Father, let us know Christ. We're asking you for grace. We're asking you for faith to believe on Christ. To give him all the honor that he deserves. All the praise. All the thanksgiving. Now, and forever. Father, use our campers. Use their families. 
Use those in their church. Use those throughout the world. Make us worshipers of Christ. In whose name, Father, in whose name we ask. Amen. Campers, family, friends of Bridge Haven, we're so thankful for you. We've enjoyed these weeks together. And again, our Lord permitting, we hope to have camp this summer. You're special to us. We're thankful for you. We're thankful for this ministry. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye.